Warsaw is a normal city, or at least it should be our idea of a normal city. It has big public spaces, a lovely riverfront, bike sharing, and of course a very respectable public transport system. So often North Americans think about the default city as being one with no urbanist credentials and probably no urban rail system. Only special very large cities like New York, Chicago, Tokyo, or Paris would be blessed with such nice urbanist spots and urban transportation systems. But a city like Warsaw is a great example of why that's not true, and it provides a great standard that medium-sized cities all over the place can hold themselves to. So let's look at this underappreciated Central European transit city. This video was meant to be about the Warsaw Metro originally, but the more I looked at Warsaw and the more I wrote, the more I realized that what I really want to talk about with Warsaw is how it should be seen as a benchmark for a good city around the world. Of course, that means Warsaw is not perfect, and like other great urban centers, it wasn't created overnight. It took decades and decades of passionate advocacy and smart policy to make Warsaw a good city for transit, and thus a good city in general, with what many would consider to be a pretty standard public transit system for a major European center but one that would probably make most urbanists pretty happy. The city isn't all that big with around 2 million residents, so it's similar in size to a city like Seattle or Denver. But Warsaw has fully integrated fares, an extensive tram network, and metros as well as S trains. And from my memory, also surprisingly good cycling infrastructure. It's also got a rail link, which I appreciate, to the fabulously named Chopin Airport, and a cross-city regional rail and intercity rail link the type of thing which advocates like me in the English-speaking world typically fawn over, but which are actually really common in European cities. Of course, Warsaw's most visible form of public transportation are its incredibly famous trams, and there's a ton of interesting stuff that you can see here on that front. Central Europe really is the tram center of the universe. The tram network in Warsaw is over 120 kilometers long with 25 routes, and here I want to insert Toronto as a comparison. Toronto has 80 kilometers of streetcar tracks and just 9 routes, something which a lot of people, including myself, argue should be increased so that there can be more routes providing direct point-to-point -point service from more places in the city, with high frequency of course. Something which highlights the potential difference in service or frequency between Toronto and Warsaw is that despite having systems which are similar in size, while Toronto has around 250 streetcars, at least after its latest order comes in, Warsaw has over 700 trams. And this is actually a great moment to do a brief interjection and talk about how these different fleets look different and what we can learn from that. Toronto is going to have 250 more or less identical streetcars from a single, or well, two manufacturers. Meanwhile, Warsaw has over 10 different models of tram from multiple manufacturers bought often in tranches of just 30 or 50 trams. And that's actually pretty common around the world for transit and in particular tram systems. Melbourne, for example, is in the same boat. A unified fleet consisting entirely or mostly of just a single type of vehicle seems to be the modern popular thing in the English-speaking world, and the places that get their expertise from the English-speaking world, because economies of scale and maximum efficiency and all of that. But that approach to designing a fleet is way less resilient. When Toronto realized that its new streetcars had a welding issue and had to be sent off to be fixed, it had to rely on its old, almost retired, different model streetcars to plug the gap. Because a single or two models of vehicle in an entire fleet creates a single point of failure. If Toronto realized it had another problem with the streetcars and had to ship them back to Quebec to be fixed, well, that would be a huge problem today, and it might mean streetcar service just needs to be shut down, something which happens with incredibly frustrating frequency in this city. But of course, that's not just limited to Toronto. In DC, whose metro fleet has become more and more homogenous with time, the newest model of metro train they have was discovered to have a problem. And because it made up such a huge portion of their fleet, well, service had to be massively cut back for months upon months as trains were repaired. Now, the main downside of Warsaw's tram system is that like other Central European tram systems from Budapest to Prague, the system feels old in its infrastructure and its vehicles, and aesthetically it's not going to win any competitions with Paris. Coupling up high floor trams is cool, but it's starting to feel a bit old. 
Fortunately though, Warsaw is addressing this. It's recently ordered a new fleet of modern looking trams from none other than Hyundai Rotem, and that actually makes me less worried about the fact that Edmonton chose Hyundai for their new trams on their Western Light Rail route. If a tram is good enough for Warsaw, it's probably good enough for any city. Another interesting thing to note, newer tram lines in Warsaw often use crossovers rather than using loops to turn the trams around, which is something that a city like Toronto could learn a lot from, to keep the size of terminus stations down, but also to just see that you can have multiple different types of vehicles in your fleet, again. Of course, the whole reason I created this video was to talk about the Metro. And it's actually a really young system. It didn't start operating until 1995. But it's been quite impressive how consistently the system has grown, a couple stations at a time, every couple of years until the present which is exactly how you should expand a transit system if you want it to be cost effective. Avoid mega projects, incremental improvement. Ridership has also been growing steadily, and if the Warsaw Metro was in the United States today, it would be the second most used rapid transit system in the country, despite having just two lines and being entirely underground. But it's not actually the ridership or the impressive growth of the system that impresses me the most. It's the smaller things. The Warsaw Metro has great integration between trams and metro, but without breaking the bank, which is something that Toronto, a city which also often has good integration, could learn a lot from. In Warsaw, typically the approach to integrating trams with metro is less tram tunnels and more conveniently located subway entrances directly off the tram platform with wide staircases. There's even typically multiple entrances so that people from either tram track and platform can board without crossing the street. Another feature that I really appreciate are these stations. They're not over the top, there's not multiple giant pavilion buildings, most entrances are simply a staircase from the street, and yet the simple designs are still very attractive. And probably more importantly in this age of incredibly expensive transit, cost effective. And of course, since it's a modern system, you have six car long modern metro trains, mostly with 750 volt DC bottom contact third rail. I say this because the Warsaw Metro has this mix of incredibly old Soviet era cars which are super retro and then really nice modern Siemens Metro cars and also ones from Skoda. Now I can't comment about the reliability of Skoda's Metro trains but they look really really nice. And I can actually say generally Skoda's new vehicles from their trams to their trains all look really good. I can't speak to their reliability but they look good. Now if you expected me to only sing Warsaw's praises, I do have some criticisms. Like any system, the metro isn't perfect, and the walk from the central train station to the central metro stations, there are two because the train station is kind of located in the corner that is formed by the two metro lines, are about half a kilometer, which is a really long way to walk with a bag for example. That being said, on the whole, Warsaw has really good public transportation, and I can only imagine that with a few more lines, which are planned, a few more new trams, which are coming, and just more bike infrastructure in general, which feels inevitable, Warsaw will be a pretty unimpeachable transit city. And that's how most cities should be. Thanks for watching.